I think that the city of Tiwanaku is one of the most mysterious sites in the world. In a way, it's the New World equivalent of Giza. It's a site about which there are far more questions than answers. All these names that are given to structures at Tiwanaku are entirely arbitrary because we know nothing about the people who built Tiwanaku. Imagine a civilization capable of constructing massive stone structures with such precision that even modern engineers are left baffled. God knows how anybody got it up there at 14,000 feet above sea. I can even breathe at 14,000 feet above sea level. Welcome to Tiwanaku and Puma Punku, ancient sites near Lake Titicaca in Bolivia that have sparked intense debate and fascination. Were the Tiwanaku people wielders of advanced technology, or is there something more mysterious at play in these enigmatic ruins? Tiwanaku is a very controversial site, and archaeologists would like it not to be much more than 2,000 years old. Dive into the mysteries of these ancient marvels and explore the theories that challenge our understanding of pre-Columbian history. Tiwanaku is an ancient archaeological site situated near Lake Titicaca in western Bolivia. This site was the heart of the Tiwanaku Empire, a highly advanced civilization that thrived between 300 AD and 1000 AD. Renowned for their impressive architectural and engineering achievements, the Tiwanaku people developed intricate agricultural systems and maintained extensive trade networks that stretched across South America. Their civilization is considered one of the most significant pre-Columbian cultures in the region, leaving a legacy that continues to captivate historians and archaeologists. The handiwork of humans is clearly evident uh, in this site. The first European accounts of Tiwanaku came from Spanish conquistadors in the 16th century. Chroniclers like Pedro Chiesa de Leon provided early descriptions of the monumental ruins they encountered, speculating about the origins of these impressive structures. These initial reports highlighted the grandeur and mystery of Tiwanaku, sparking curiosity and interest in the site for centuries to come. In the late 19th century, the first detailed studies of Tiwanaku began to take shape. American archaeologist and diplomat Ephraim George Squire visited the site in 877, meticulously documenting the ruins through detailed descriptions and drawings. His work provided valuable insights into the architectural complexity of Tiwanaku. Around the same time, French explorer Charles Wiener also documented the site, contributing further to the growing body of knowledge about this ancient civilization. These early efforts laid the foundation for ongoing research, ensuring that Tiwanaku remains a vital subject of archaeological study and discovery. We're going to see more physical evidence for this, more as time goes by. The key structures and features of Tiwanaku are as fascinating as they are monumental. One of the most significant structures at the site is the Akapana Pyramid. This large, terraced mound stands approximately 16 and a half meter high and spans a base area of around 200 meters by 250 meters. The pyramid's design is thought to emulate a sacred mountain, reflecting the religious and cultural importance placed on such natural formations. To prevent water damage and erosion, a sophisticated drainage system was integrated into the pyramid. This system included a network of stone-lined channels and underground conduits that efficiently diverted rainwater away from the structure, showcasing the advanced engineering skills of the Tiwanaku people. The pyramid's terraces were constructed using a combination of large stone blocks and compacted earth. The stone blocks were precisely cut and fitted together without the use of mortar, demonstrating the builder's high level of craftsmanship. Another remarkable feature at Tiwanaku is the Kalasaya Complex, a large rectangular enclosure surrounded by high stone walls. The enclosure measures approximately 130 meters by 120 meters. Within the Kalasaya Complex stands the famous Gateway of the Sun, a massive monolithic archway carved from a single block of andesite stone. The Gateway of the Sun is about 3 meters high and 4 meters wide, with an estimated weight of 10 tons. The intricate carvings on the gateway include depictions of deities and astronomical symbols believed to be related to the Tiwanaku calendar and cosmology. These carvings highlight the Tiwanaku people's advanced understanding of astronomy and their integration of celestial events into their religious practices. There's curious astronomical alignments at Tiwanaku. The site was aligned to the summer solstice in 10,500 BC. 
Equally impressive is the semi-subterranean temple, an imposing sunken courtyard measuring about 28 and a half meters by 26 meters. One of the most distinctive features of this temple is the collection of carved stone heads embedded in its walls. These heads protrude from the walls at various heights and angles, representing a diverse array of facial features. Some scholars suggest that these heads symbolize different ethnic groups or important individuals, reflecting the Tiwanaku civilization's diversity and social complexity. Similarly fascinating is Puma Punku, another marvel of the Tiwanaku civilization. Puma Punku was known to Spanish explorers in the 16th century, just like the main Tiwanaku site. However, it wasn't until the 20th century that modern archaeological efforts brought significant scholarly attention to Puma Punku. Systematic excavations and studies began in earnest in the mid-20th century, revealing the site's unique architectural style and the mysterious techniques used in its construction. The stone blocks at Puma Punku are particularly renowned for their extraordinary precision. The primary materials used are andesite and sandstone, both known for their durability and hardness. The stones are cut with such exactitude that the joints between them are virtually invisible, so precise that even a razor blade cannot fit between the stones. The exact methods used to cut and shape the stones at Puma Punku remain a topic of debate and fascination. Several theories have been proposed to explain the precision and complexity of the stonework. One prevalent theory is that the Tiwanaku people used metal tools made from bronze or copper alloys. These metals are capable of cutting softer stones, but the hardness of andesite presents a significant challenge. However, evidence of bronze and copper tools at other Tiwanaku sites supports this theory. Some stones show marks consistent with the use of chisels or other cutting tools, suggesting that the builders had access to and effectively utilized metal tools. Another theory posits the use of abrasive materials like sand and water to cut and shape the stones. This technique involves rubbing sand and water against the stone's surface to gradually wear it down, potentially explaining the smooth surfaces and precise angles observed at Puma Punku. Large grinding stones could have been used to smooth and polish the stone surfaces after the initial cutting, further contributing to the precise fit of the blocks. Some researchers propose that the Tiwanaku civilization possessed advanced technologies or techniques that have since been lost. This theory suggests they might have had knowledge of sophisticated methods or tools that we do not fully understand today. A fringe theory, popularized by some alternative history proponents, suggests that extraterrestrial beings assisted the Tiwanaku people in constructing Puma Punku. Some people find, think that the answer is, is extraterrestrial visitors. <laughs> I don't think that's the answer, but yeah. who knows? While this theory captures the imagination, it is not supported by mainstream archaeology and remains speculative. One of the most iconic features of Puma Punku is the presence of H-shaped blocks. These blocks are a testament to the advanced engineering and architectural skills of the Tiwanaku civilization. The H-shaped blocks interlock in a modular fashion, suggesting they were designed to fit together in a specific configuration. This modularity indicates a highly planned and sophisticated approach to construction. The H-blocks vary in size, but many are approximately one meter high and wide, with a depth of about half a meter. Each block weighs several tons, with some of the largest estimated to weigh over 10 tons. Creating these H-blocks would have required advanced stone-cutting techniques. The precise angles and smooth surfaces indicate a high degree of craftsmanship, pointing to the use of advanced tools or methods. Another fascinating aspect of Puma Punku is the transportation of its massive stone blocks. Some of these blocks weigh over 100 tons and were transported from quarries located several kilometers away. One widely accepted theory is that the Tiwanaku people used wooden sleds to transport the large stone blocks. These sleds could have been pulled by large groups of workers, leveraging human muscle power. The use of log rollers beneath the sleds could have facilitated the movement of the heavy stones. As the sled moved forward, workers would have placed logs in front of it, continuously rolling the sled over the logs. Given the absence of large domesticated draft animals in the region during that period, it is more likely that large teams of workers, organized and coordinated, performed the task using simple machines like levers and inclined planes to aid in lifting and moving the massive stones. The Tiwanaku civilization likely mobilized a substantial labor force with coordinated efforts similar to those used in other ancient construction projects, such as the building of the Egyptian pyramids. Some theories propose that Lake Titicaca, 
which was larger and closer to the site during the time of the Tiwanaku civilization, could have been used to transport the stones by rafts. This method would have involved floating the stones across the lake before moving them overland for the final leg of the journey. The use of earthen ramps is another plausible theory. Ramps could have been built to gradually elevate the stones to their intended positions. This method would have required significant labor and planning, but is consistent with techniques used by other ancient civilizations. Simple machines such as levers and pulleys could have been employed to lift and position the stones. These tools, combined with ramps, would have allowed the Tiwanaku builders to achieve the precise placement required for their structures. The precision stonework at Pumapunku is often compared to the masonry of the Egyptian pyramids, particularly the Great Pyramid of Giza. Constructed around 2580 to 2560 BCE, the Great Pyramid consists of millions of limestone blocks, some weighing up to 80 tons. The precision of the blocks and the alignment of the pyramid with celestial bodies reflect advanced engineering and architectural knowledge. Similar to the Great Pyramid, Puma Punku's stone blocks are meticulously cut and perfectly fitted together. The precision seen in both sites suggests a high level of planning and execution, pointing to the possibility that both civilizations had advanced knowledge of construction techniques and tools, although the exact methods remain debated.